All right, welcome into the FNIA podcast with a couple NFL legends and Rodney Harrison, Tony Dungy. You guys know this league well, and you know that it all begins on draft day. So we're going to run through a mock draft here, the top 11 picks of the draft. I'll start it off with number one. I haven't really heard much pushback <laughs> on this. Caleb Williams, the safe pick. There he goes off to Chicago. I think it's the right pick to pick number two, the Commanders. Coach Dungy, how do you see it? Let's go, Coach. All right. Well, the Commanders, they're in the same position as the Chicago Bears. Hey, we need a quarterback. We didn't have a great team last year. Who do we have to pick from? Uh, Jack already took the top guy off the board. So now I'm looking at Jaden Daniels from LSU, Drake May from North Carolina. Some positives for each guy, some negatives for each guy. But Daniels has the experience. He's played a lot of football. He's been really productive in the big games. Drake May is kind of the up-and-comer, that newcomer, only a two-year starter, great athlete, talented. He's a little bit bigger, and maybe he's got the potential. Uh, but, man, it's a tough call. I happened to be at the University of North Carolina two weeks ago. I spoke at their coach's clinic, and I met Drake May, spent some time with him. And I hate to say it, but I fell in love with him, his personality and the way his teammates rallied around and the way everybody responded to him. Uh, so I'm a little bit biased here, and, and I really love this young man. But I think in the final analysis, I've got to go with that experience in the, the big games and go with Jaden Daniel. I think that's a good choice, Coach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with the number three pick, the New England Patriots, and you talked about two young quarterbacks. But to me, this is not where the Patriots want to take Drake May or, uh, well, at least Drake May. I don't think he's a top three pick. This is an opportunity. You look at the guys, the talent that they have on that roster, not a whole bunch, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Demario Davis, Tyquan Thornton, um, Kayshawn Boutte, they don't have a lot of talent. So I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm taking him with the third pick overall. We talk about him being a generational talent. He is the 2024 version of Randy Moss. Big, fast, can catch. He has no weaknesses, coach. And you coached his dad. You know how much of a pain in the butt his dad was at 5'10 around the league. Can you imagine this young man and the imprint that he can make on New England? And I just don't think Drake May is worthy of the third pick overall. I was thinking about this before we even came on. Peyton Manning was the number one pick. I think, do I think Drake May is two picks less than Peyton Manning? Absolutely not. And I know Peyton struggled as a rookie, but there's no way I'm taking Drake May at three. I think he's more probably of a second or third round guy. I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Rodney, I, I agree with you. And Bill Pullen told me something when I worked with him in New England. You're only going to be picking in the top five very rarely. You can't afford to miss, and you better take special. You have a, a, an opportunity to get this. So you may need a quarterback. You may need something else. But don't take something you need and pass up something that's special. Mm -hmm. If you're in the top five, take special. So I'm, I'm with you all the way. I saw little Marvin was two years old when, when I got there, and he is uh, he's everything you want in a receiver. What's that family like, Coach? What are they getting in that family? You know that family very well. Uh, it is perseverance, it's dedication, it's hard work, and that's what he learned from his dad. Uh, I don't know where he got the size because he definitely <laughs> didn't get that from dad. But everything else about the, the way I'm going to attack my profession, I'm going to be the best I can be, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to – no fanfare, no no frills, none of that. I'm just going to go out there and work hard. And uh, whoever drafts this guy is going to love him as a teammate and as a, a person. Hey, Coach, I agree with you because I think he, this kid has the talent to be a future Hall of Famer. You talk about all, you know, all the measurables and, and what he does on a football field. There's not many corners that are professional right now that can guard this guy one-on-one. -on -one. He is a difference maker. He, he's going to give defensive coordinators headaches trying to rotate defenses around him. And like I said, if the Patriots are trying to build a roster, you got to get good players. Kendrick Bourne is a solid player. Kayshawn Boutte, all these guys are average players. And then you bring in a young guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., he sets the tone, and maybe more guys would like to come and play with him. You, you, you just don't know. Roddy, what do they do at quarterback, talking about the Patriots? Well, you're probably going to have to find something in the later rounds or possibly even trade for a quarterback, but there's no way I'm spending the number three pick overall on Drake May. There's no way. 
I like it. All right, well, we have the first steal of the draft thing because I was thinking Marvin Harrison Jr. would still be hanging out by the time it got to the Arizona Cardinals, who are the fourth pick. So I'm going to have to make a little slight draft day adjustment here, which we know is a big part of this thing. And I'm going to go Joe Alt to mm. the Cardinals, who I had a little lower down on the chart. I was thinking maybe to Tennessee and the Titans, but a pick like Rodney just made can shift the whole board. And Joe Walt, ever since he was 18 years old, there has been some special stories about him just getting to the building, learning the offense like that, being the most athletic in that offensive line room at Notre Dame. His dad is, you know, an all-pro offensive lineman that coached him since he was a little kid. I think this is as safe a bet of a tackle as you are going to find in the NFL draft. In my opinion, he'll go on to be a Hall of Famer, and the Cardinals need it. They needed a receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr., they need a tackle, too. There goes Joe Alt. I think they need players. And if I'm the Cardinals, I would have to. And I love Joe Alt. Absolutely, 100%. But I'm almost coaching. Maybe you can speak to this. What about trading back? Because I know Minnesota and there are some other teams would love to take that four spot, Coach. That And that's what's going to happen. If your pick comes through at three, now there's going to be some quarterbacks sitting there. And Minnesota's going to think about it. Do I go up and get this guy? Denver. Um, Denver, the Giants, maybe I go up a couple of picks to get the guy that I really want if I have a special feeling on them. Uh, if you have to pick, and I've been in that situation before. Hey, we really don't want to pick. We hope the phone rings and we'll be willing to go down. But if we do have to pick, Joe Alt, uh, I coached his dad in Kansas City. His dad actually was a friend of mine growing up in the Twin Cities area. When I was in college, John Alt was a wow. fantastic athlete. Um, yep. in high school and you're talking about dedicated hard work passing on those family values we talked about Marvin Harrison learning from his dad Joe definitely learned from John and he's going to be a he's going to be a solid starter for years but I, I'm like Rodney if I had a chance to go down and pick up a little bit more uh, I probably would because I was I was looking for that special player in Marvin Harrison now he's not there yeah. Who, who do you think that team is that's the most quarterback hungry and the most willing to come up? Is it Denver and Sean Payton, or do you think it's another team? Minnesota. You think I, Minnesota? Could see, I could see Minnesota. Yep, I really could. Um, I, I talked to Kevin O'Connell quite a bit. I'm actually going to see him this weekend, uh, and he was devastated, you know, losing Kirk Cousins. And a lot of the players, are, Justin Jefferson is devastated. So <laughs> those guys want a quarterback. And uh, if, if you have a chance to get a special one, and that's what it comes down to. Do you think these guys are special? If they are, go up and get them. Now, I have a guy that I kind of think is special. We're going to wait a little bit. It's not quite time for him yet, but we'll see what happens in the rest of this draft. I like it. That's a little teaser. The Chargers, Rodney, a team that picked you. Now you pick for the Chargers. Absolutely. And Harbaugh, you know, he wants to run the ball. He's going to push Justin Herbert. He's going to challenge him. But I'm taking um, tight end Brock Bowers from the University of Georgia. I live in Atlanta. I got a chance to watch a lot of UGA football. And this kid is just flat out. Can't nobody stop him. I mean, you can line him up out wide. He can go against corners, safeties, nickelbacks. He is big. He's, he's a lot faster than what you think. And he's a solid blocker. But this is a guy that's going to be a difference maker. And you think about Kansas City, the impact that Travis Kelsey had on all defenses. I mean, he's a major reason why they continue to win championships. Now you flip it. You you put Steve Spagnola in a situation where he has to worry about defending the tight end. And really, you, you think about losing um, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Austin Eckler. That's a lot of production that Darryl you lose. Everett. Yeah. A absolutely. Yeah. But you get this tight end, man. He is a difference maker. And there's no way I'm passing up on this guy. Wow. Okay. Already a little shifting in the board of how we might have it. Let's get to the Giants at pick six. Tony, where are you leaning with New York? Well, I was really thinking, you know, one of those receivers would slide down. I'm thinking the quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, maybe even one, two, three, four. So I'm right. looking at maybe the fourth or fifth quarterback, and I've got a good receiver like Malik Neighbors or Adunze. But now Drake May's falling down there, okay? to number six, and I need that quarterback solidified. Uh, I think I'm going that direction just the way this draft is. Coach, you just paid Daniel Jones four-year, $160 million. You just gave him that. Now you're going to draft the quarterback in the top five? Are you top five or six? Are you kidding me? 
I, I'm going to take that quarterback because I don't know if Daniel Jones is going to stay healthy enough. He hasn't won enough games for us. And uh, I, I think it's time for that young quarterback. I just I don't understand why pay him the type of money they pay him if they're unsure about their quarterback situation and not even six, seven, eight months later, you go draft another quarterback. That's tough. I'm probably getting fired, but I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going to get that quarterback and make sure I've got him. Coach, what, what's the what's the right philosophy with that position? If you're pretty sure you have a guy, but you're you know not quite positive right now, what do you feel like? Is it smart to just start stacking them, draft another one, and just build that roster of quarterbacks? Or what's the right move if you're in between? Jack, you have to have a quarterback, and if you're in between, if you're not sure, then you don't have one. That's so right. uh, you you got to go get them now. I, I love Green Bay the way they've done it uh, over the last forty years. Brett Favre came up there. He got uh, you know, to sit a little while. He learned. Okay, they when they still had Favre going, they drafted Aaron Rodgers, but they knew Favre was at the tail end. They draft Rodgers. He sits and learns, becomes an All Pro, Hall of Fame guy. At the end of his tenure, okay, they draft Jordan Love, and everybody. Kind of like what Rodney said. Hey, we got a court. Why are we taking Jordan Love? Well, they're going to be in good shape for the next ten years down the road. So, I think you want to have that quarterback in place. And if you have any doubt at all, then you don't have your quarterback in place. Yeah, and I have a lot of and I have a lot of doubt with these quarterbacks that you're talking about for the Giants. Yeah. But if I'm the Giants, I'm getting a difference maker either on the offensive line one of these really good tackles or I'm getting a doomsday who you talked yeah. about. I mean, the kid is dynamic. You know, you throw the ball up, he can go deep and that's what they need. They, they drafted Jalen Hyatt last year. He's a speedster from university of Tennessee, but he didn't quite get it done. They need, they need a home run hitter. Yeah. And this young man is a home run hitter. He is. And, and originally that was my thought. If all those quarterbacks are gone, I'm getting that big play wide receiver and let him help Daniel Jones. Um, so we'll see what they do. But this, this would be, if, if, if May is there, I'd have to think about it. Okay. I Coach, you, wait, wait, wait. Those. Coach just fell in love with his personality. I did. You watch the tape. What about those <laughs> out routes that he missed by like five yards? Like, you still got to watch yeah. the tape. Yeah. I love the yeah. kid. You no, know, amen. Man. Amen. All right. I like it. So I think this is one of those picks where you just got to read the board. So I was thinking the Titans would be in love with Joe Alt. That was the original pick I had. Now you have quarterback go right before him. I think they now would turn receiver and go Malik Neighbors. No matter what, they got to help that young quarterback, right? You want to protect them. It's kind of a similar type thing you're talking about. Either protect them or you give them something on the outside they can win uh, and win often. And I'm going to go with Tennessee. Let's go Neighbors. And sometimes, Jack, that's not bad. I've been in that situation as a coach in the draft room and your heart gets broken. The guy you have in mind goes right before you pick and you're like, oh, I can't believe yeah. that. Well, we got to just take the next best player on the board and it ends up being, a, a, you know, the best thing that ever happened to you. So that could be the case for the Titans. That's it. And if you can get one of those difference making receivers, it's worth it that high. You know, I think when, when the Bengals had the pick between, are they going to take Jamar Chase? Are they going to take one of those left tackles that could be around forever and change the franchise? If they're good enough, it's worth it, in my opinion, to go get a weapon at that level. And I think, I think neighbors can be, can be that level. Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, neighbors, Tennessee will have some heat. They will, they will have some heat. And they the look good. But I agree with you, Jack. That that is the philosophy. If I, I think if I was picking in the top ten uh now, I'd be looking for difference makers, as Rodney said. Quarterback, big play receiver, big time pass rusher. I'm looking for that guy who can change the game. Yep, I'm with you. All right, Rodney's back up. Atlanta Falcons at pick number eight. You know this franchise well, hi Rod. Oh, I love the Atlanta Falcons and what they've done. I think hiring Raheem Morris was a was just an absolute home run. He's going to bring a lot of energy. He's going to um, hold that defense accountable, but he needs a pass rusher. And I think getting a guy on the edge, the young man from UCLA, I really like him. Um, I hope I don't blow his name, Leia too. <laughs> <Lea> too. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the kid from UCLA, he's 6'5", 260. Um, just a, a extremely, just an energetic guy, um, plays extremely hard, and that's what Atlanta needs. You saw Jesse Bates and the impact that he had at the safety position for Atlanta. He became a leader in all-pro safety. 
they need some help up front. Jerry Gray, um, Grady Jarrett can still play at a high level, but they need that pass rush. That's the one thing that they're missing. But I would love to take that kid at um, number eight if I'm Atlanta. Mm. Now, Rodney did that, and I'm Matt Eberflus with the Bears, and my heart just got broken because I'm saying – in my defense, I need to pass rusher. Latou was the guy I had my eye on. I thought he was going to fall right to me. It'd be perfect. Now my heart is broken. <laughs> and I got to say, well, let me take the next best guy on the board, and I'm going to take the receiver from Washington, the Dunze. Uh, and it's probably going to turn out great for me, but I'll go out there and have my press conference and say, yeah, Dunze was the guy we wanted all along. He was our guy, knowing that my heart was broken. I wanted that pass rusher, but Rodney snuck in on me. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's honestly crazy when you do this mock draft, you realize how you can fall in love with somebody for your team and for this reason and that reason. You think that they're going to do something else before you, and then they just don't. And now you got to adjust and go on the fly. I, this is another one of those situations for me. I like the Jets to get at pick number 10 somebody to help Aaron just have a win option on the outside. You know, I think they, they have enough, but I'd, I'd like to see them have another weapon or two. I like Bowers. I liked one of the receivers. Now those are out of the picture. With Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith, I would just be concerned that one of those two guys is not going to make it through the year. You know, uh, maybe both of those guys at some point is going to be out for a period of time. So, I would go young. I'd get another tackle. We saw how bad their offensive line was last year. I'll yes. go with this Fulaga out of uh, Oregon State with the Beavers, mm -hmm. with Joe Alt being off the table. Let's, let's get him another tackle and give Aaron a second to throw this thing. Hey, Jack, I love that pick, and I was saying the same thing. As much as you want to have somebody on the opposite side of um, um, the young wide receiver they have, that he needs protection. What was it, the first quarter, the first series, Aaron Rodgers dropped back and, got, and, and hurt himself? Um, but there's a lot of really outstanding tackles, and I think tackle is the perfect position because you think about Tyron. Tyron, every year he's hurt. He's going to miss year. five, six, seven, eight games. I mean, we talk about it all the time. When he's in there, he's a stud. You know, he's an all-pro all player, but he's not in there very often. There's enough tackles to get some young tackles and, and really get that depth. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like with, you know, with Aaron saying now that he's been rejuvenated and wants to play more years, that could be one of those guys that can help him not only this year, but for the next couple of years, protect the Aaron. How about with the Minnesota Vikings coach at pick number 11, the final pick of our mock draft here? All right. Well, I was calling everybody up there in the top two or three. I wanted to go up and get that quarterback because I, I need to replace uh, Kirk Cousins, and it didn't happen. So I've got two choices now. Do I overdraft the quarterback that I like? Or do I take, as Rodney would say, the next best player? The other thing I need is pass rushes. Dallas Turner from Alabama is available. Uh, Jared Verse, a power guy from Florida State, they could help me. I know I need that quarterback. I think I'm going to stay and take Dallas Turner. And then I'm going to do everything I can to move up a little bit in the second round uh, and take Michael Penix and, and hope Ooh. I get him. And Ooh. it's a little too high for Penix right now because I don't think that's where he's rated – but I personally love this kid. Uh, I followed the Pac-10 or Pac-12, you know, since my son played there. Penix nice. is from right here in Tampa. I know his history. I know how hard he works. I know the type of leader he's been. And I've seen him in the big games really do it. So uh, he's, he's my sleeper. He's the guy that I, I want. Where do I have to get him? Somewhere in that second round, probably. Mm, I like that pick. I like the pick, and then I like the follow-up for the quarterback. I like the way you did that there. Who, who the heck does Denver wind up with the quarterback? You know Sean Payton's going to do something. Where, where does he go? <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean Payton, they're calling people to move up. They're trying to get up a little higher and uh, somehow package enough to get Drake, May I don't know, J.J. McCarthy, uh, somebody. But Sean's got his eye on somebody, and uh, they're, they're going to come out of this draft with a quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.